Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another video. We are talking about the big breaking news today that Rafa Benitez has been sacked by Everton Football Club as their manager. Of course, by the time this uploads, it won't be exactly big breaking news, but it has been breaking news today in the sense that Everton have finally decided to get rid of the Spaniard. Not even 24 hours after Everton's latest defeat to Norwich, he has been given the chop. The writing had seemed to be on the wall for a while, to be fair, but it finally has happened. We're going to be talking all about this big breaking news story, looking at all of, all of it from different aspects and different angles. But before we go any further, I would like to remind you all to please like the video and also subscribe if you're new. Both things are always and forever be greatly appreciated, of course. But for now, let's get into this big breaking news story, talking about Rafa Benitez, who, like I say, has been given the chop. This news, like I say, doesn't even come 24 hours after Everton's latest defeat. Everton's latest defeat was uh, against Norwich, a side battling relegation. They lost 2-1 and that was seen as the final straw by the Everton board to get rid of the former Everton, uh, Liverpool manager. Uh, he leaves Everton currently in, I believe, 15th place, having won... Uh, won uh, four, drawn five, and lost ten of um, his opening of the opening nineteen games of the season. Half over halfway, of course. Um, look, we knew that this was going to turn sour. I didn't expect it to really turn sour this quickly. I was at least going to say that he probably gets a season out of this at most before things turn really sour. But it is what it is, and this is how. Obviously, everything's transpired and happened. We knew it would, would have begun toxic. We saw it began toxic with the Everton fans. They weren't happy about the appointment of a former Liverpool manager, especially a former Liverpool manager that had given Liverpool so much during his reign there. The, the infamous Champions League victory, the FA Cup triumph, a, a, a Premier League t a title challenge and so on and so forth. Rafa had given Liverpool a lot of great memories. So a former Liverpool manager coming in to, to Everton was obviously not going to go down well with the supporters and that is what it proved right from the off. It was toxic right from the beginning. Everton fans protested, they even left banners outside of his house and some pretty vile ones uh, that uh, injuries occurred right off, the, right off the bat as well. Other off the field issues also occurred for him from the get-go but apart from that when it came to actually kicking the ball on the pitch it actually started off pretty well he got a win on his debut as Everton manager he got a couple of good results after that but then things started to spiral out of control the wheels started to come off and it they never got back on the rails basically um, injuries continued to happen performances dropped drastically results were just terrible. Everton fans won't like me for reminding them of this, but the biggest highlights were, of course, the 5-2 defeat to Watford, another side struggling to fight relegation, uh, but it was a bit of a topsy-turvy game in that and a bit of a mad game at that as well that Everton lost out on and lost out hard on with a 5-2 with a scoreline, of course. And then, of course, the big one, the Merseyside derby, losing 4-1 against Liverpool in that game. And that, again, sort of exacerbated and made even bigger the sort of Agent Rafa chants and Agent Rafa sort of banter that Liverpool fans were dealing to them. They were, Everyone was convinced that a former Liverpool manager going into Everton was only to sabotage them further. And of course, four-one defeat to Liverpool was only gonna make them cries louder and louder. It even it it just didn't get any better. It just never got any better from those opening three or four games of the season. It just never got better. There were a little couple of glimpses here and there, a draw against Manchester United. Um, a draw against Chelsea, a couple of big results here and there, but it was really more against the teams that were near the bottom of the table or should be near and around them about the midway point of the table 
that really, really stuck in the minds of Everton fans and really made them dislike Rafa even more so than what they already did. I will say this though, I will say that I am a bit sorry for Rafa because he came into a club that was already... It was already hamstrung from the get-go, basically, is what I'm trying to say. He was already hurt in the transfer window because of Everton's past failings with transfers. FFP came down hard on Everton this summer, meaning that Rafa had very little to work with. And with him having very little to work with, he did manage to actually pull out a couple of uh, a couple of big transfers, really, when you look back on it in hindsight. Andros Townsend played well for the manager. He may not be a star name or anything, but he did play well and work hard for the manager of Rafa Benitez. He did seem to buy into him and buy into what he was trying to implement on this team. But obviously the one that stands out more is Damari Gray. Damari Gray brought in for, I believe, one and a half million pounds. And he has arguably been... The, mo the biggest standout performer definitely for Everton, but he's arguably been one of the more standout performers for the Premier League uh, this season as well. One of the buys of the Premier League, one of the bargains of the Premier League, I think. So I think that Benitez actually did well in that aspect, despite, like I say, being hamstrung from the beginning and not having very much to work with. Uh, moving on from that, I do feel sorry again for the fact that they had injuries. I alluded to this earlier. They had some big injuries, Everton, this season, mainly to Abdoulaye Decore, who again was another uh, standout performer of the Premier League this season before getting injured a couple of times. And that really sort of took its toll on him and the squad overall. But mainly, of course, to Dominic Calvert-Lewin. He's been injured for at most of the season so far and I think that really hurt Matt Rafa more than anything because I think this squad was particularly built for a player like Calvert-Lewin a mobile centre forward who's big he's strong he's powerful in the air and I think that a direct approach would actually have favoured him more uh, to really uh, show off his strengths and show off his stronger attributes and I think with having the likes of like a Lucas Dinier uh, Seamus Coleman, Andros Townsend and uh, Damari Gray as far as all four of their like delivery and their set piece taking and everything like that I think that would have really really helped uh, Calvert-Lewin get a few more goals this season and be a bit more almost like a playmaker in a way using more of his like direct style of, uh, of play so I think that he his absence was really, really uh, a big miss for Everton and particularly for Rafa Benitez. And maybe it could have worked out a bit differently had he been there. Who knows? Maybe they would have picked up a few more points than what they would have. And maybe uh, Rafa could have been on a bit more borrowed time. But it, it is what it is. Another thing he had to deal with, I, I think, was a lot of division within the squad. There were a lot of groups within the squad. And one of them, or well, one of the players that he had mostly a problem with, was Lucas Digne. Lucas Digne had been, um, been a regular starter at left back for a while, one of Everton's best and key players, and allegedly a public falling out uh, came out about uh, beginning of December time. And from there, Digne was isolated and pushed out the squad. And ultimately, in recent days, he's been sold to Aston Villa. So a public... Uh, dispute resulted in that. I don't think that probably brought him any favours, particularly maybe from some of the players within the, within the group. Um, I, I, like I say, there were rumblings of division throughout that group, some against, some for the manager, some against them, and so on and so forth. It, it It's just a mess. It's just a complete mess. And whether you look at it from the players on the pitch or whether you look at it from the fans, to the boardroom, the power hierarchy, the owners, and so on and so forth at that club. Everything is seemingly divided, and of course, that kind of showed that on the pitch, and with all these rumours and whispers and ramp and rumblings of this kind of thing happening within the squad as well. Like I say, there were a few highlights in his time. One of them was actually a victory, a 2-1 victory against Arsenal, in which... The fans were going to protest and walk out in typical sort of fashion though. Everton actually played well in that game and got the victory after going a goal down. Um, so it didn't really have the kind of same effect and they actually showed a bit of solidarity in that kind of 
protest that they were behind the club. But again, the problems that lie within this club are far beyond a manager and far beyond whatever manager comes in next. Because whatever manager does come in next, they're going to inherit the same amount of problems that Benitez did. And it may get worse before it gets better. Who knows? Maybe, maybe one of these managers will have a magic wand and maybe they'll manage to get something good going for a while. Or at least until they're there. But who knows, because that's what seemingly is the plan, because it doesn't seem to be a plan. This The issue that this club run far deeper than just the manager, and this club is rotten to the core. It seems to be a faceless organisation that doesn't want to answer any of the tough questions, any of the tough questions in regards to running a football club, management, players, a direction for the future. They don't seem to have a clear and transparent plan as to where this, they want this club to go. They know the end goal, they know the end goal, but they just don't know the steps and stages of how to get to that end goal. They're building a new stadium. We know why they're building a new stadium. More revenue, yes, but they also want to get this club back to being a European club, a, a club playing on European nights. They just don't know how to get there. They pumped a lot of money into the club before, but they didn't really have a backup plan. And when that plan didn't work, and when the managers that came in weren't good enough to take that club to the next level, they didn't have a backup plan. And so it's just a complete, maddening, chaotic club right now. And to top it off even further, you can tell that they're not footballing people, those that are in charge, because they've had five full-time managers in the past six years, all of them very different in their approach to the game, in their tactics, everything about them very different they have no clue what they're doing and like i say going forward now they've got to find a new manager i don't expect them to have any clue as to a new manager to bring in and they probably got about five or six different names but i can guarantee you all five of the five or six of those different names are all people that are on different ends of the tactical and uh, everything else kind of scale they're just all over the place on any kind of scale you can think of because they're all probably very different managers indeed they just pick ones that have got like a good cv or a good history or knowledge or understanding of the game and just hope that they've got some sort of magic wand in order to kind of do something that will make this club at least the tiniest bit successful i don't hold my hopes too far it's it's weird that I'm talking about it from a Liverpool fan's point of view. Of course, I'm looking at it from the outside looking in, of course, even from a Rivals fan perspective. It is a little bit funny in a banterous way, but if I put my neutral football hat on, then maybe I do kind of feel a little bit sorry for the Everton faithful and the Everton fans on this. There is early talk that Everton are allegedly looking at the likes of Wayne Rooney to take over. Um, I think this is possibly a good move. I also think that they could also look at maybe Duncan Ferguson full time, someone who knows the club, passionate about the club, and maybe that will buy them a little bit more time to get fans back on side. But they need to start obviously answering the big and tough questions regarding this football club and being a bit more clear and transparent in difficult times for Everton. Do I expect? Um, that to kind of happen? Probably not. I, you can also look at it on the flip side and say that if they do bring in an Everton legend or a guy who made his name at Everton like Rooney, like Ferguson, if things do go wrong, that only adds more heat not onto the manager who is obviously being the fall guy for a few years at this club rather than the owners, but that will shift all of that heat from the fans and everybody else onto the owners and the people in power. So, it is kind of a bit um, of a double-edged sword. I don't know what's going to happen at Everton, but it is going to be intriguing to find out. But what we do know is that Rafa Benitez is no longer the Toffees manager. He's no longer the Everton manager. He's been sacked today with the defeat to Norwich being the final straw for the Everton board. But of course, as I always say, guys, these are just the thoughts, comments, opinions, predictions, whatever you want to call it, of this guy. I want to know what you guys think. What do you guys make of this big breaking news story that Rafa Benitez has been sacked by Everton Football Club? 
as their manager. I'd love to know your thoughts, your comments, opinions, predictions, whatever you want to call it on this subject, whether it's about Rafa Nies himself, the club, or even who they may bring in for a new manager, all down below, down in the comment section, because I'm sure it'll all make for interesting reading. Otherwise, hit the like button on the way. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you're new or want to see more content like this. Both things are always and forever be greatly appreciated. And as always, thank you all so much for watching and listening. I've been Fletch. This has been another Fletch Talks video. And I will see you all again soon in another video.